But with this technique, we are using we are using two theaters. So before the kidney was taken out, the other person is receiving is also opened up and prepared. So really, from the time of the kidney to the time of confrontation, we well, just about seven minutes. Seven minutes. Professor Matthew Che is a uh, doctor here at the Polybu Teaching Hospital. We just finished the post kidney transplant uh, press briefing at the Polybu Teaching Hospital, Ghana's premier teaching hospital. And uh, Prof is one of the key people who performed um, a kidney transplant in the month of July. So tell us a bit more about how the procedure went and how uh, they are planning to do a bit more for Ghanaians in subsequent months. Doc, uh, thank you, Prof. Thank you very much. Thank you too. <laughs> so you're a prof, uh, prof and doc. Yes, yeah, a professor, yes, prof. urology. Okay. Professor. First of all, congratulations uh, for, 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 for this uh, procedure. Is it the first time you are doing this procedure? No. So we started the journey of getting kidney transplants in the country from 2008. Okay. But we had virtually completely expatriate coming in uh, to do these procedures. Yeah. Uh, because they were a huge kind of team, getting the experience locally was not too, too difficult. However, a lot of our people went out there to get experience with it. But of course, we're still depending on these local people to come here, on social people to come in, as I said. But then challenges came in such that it was erratic. And when there are pandemics like Ebola, like COVID, we didn't get the support that we needed. We our patients needed it we are unable to offer it. So we decided that, no, this time we must go local because we are with our people in thick and thin. So we can be able to offer the service irrespective of what the global you know, health and other travel restrictions are related. And so that's the motivation for coming this far to get to this procedure. Yeah. How many doctors or surgeons perform this, this transplant? So, so for this transplant, uh, we have what they call the donor where we take it from the kidney and then the recipient. So the donor, we normally have three doctors involved, two three surgeons involved, and then four the recipient also have three surgeons involved. So we, we took our people, got their hands, lifted the blood, six doctors were involved. How, how long was the procedure? How many days did it take or how many hours did it take? So the procedure itself started with preparation of the patient. Okay. And that has taken us months to prepare okay. because we have to do some lab tests. We have to make sure that the kidney will not be rejected when we call it cross matching. We have to make sure that their blood levels are normal and also psychologically prepared. Right. So for those person coming to donate, the yes. fact that it is, it, there is isn't much risk in the donation that they will survive on our kidney. We need to take time to sign them up to come to that point. So it's taking months. And then to allow us to start some medications and other things before the surgery itself, we bring the patients on admission two days before the surgery. So they can introduce these medications and control the psychological preparation. And the surgery is done on a particular day. For the donor, it takes about two hours to take the kidney out safely. Now, once the kidney is out, we normally put in ice before we transplant it to another patient, which takes us another two hours to be able to do that. But with this technique, we are using, we are using two theaters. So before the kidney was taken out, the other person is receiving is also opened up and prepared. So really, from the time of the kidney to the time of transportation, we well, just about seven minutes. Seven minutes? Because we have prepared them already, so you pick it up, still in ice within seven minutes, it's already being diffused or put in the other place. So the transition is just about seven, ten minutes. But two hours before, seven minutes in between, and another one and a half, two hours, and the procedure was over. How, how quickly is a person able to return to a regular life, whether being a donor or being a recipient of a, of a kidney? The donors require, recover extremely very quickly because you have taken one kidney out, but the other kidney is more than enough to help them out. But you know that about a quarter of a kidney is more than good enough to sustain life. So most of them, they are fine. The following day, they are eating, we are willing to move around. We normally ask for what to call bed rest and sit because we have done a few surgery, a few pain here and there, and so we keep them bed rest and a few pain. So they recover quickly. And as I speak now, 
all the donors have been discharged home. So, yeah. The recipients take a bit of time. A bit of time because we want to make sure that the kidneys are functioning well. Sometimes it takes a bit of time for the kidneys to work well or to clear the backlog of you know, impurities in the system. And until they clear completely, we may need to support the dialysis once or twice until all these chemicals leave the system. So they are with us and to, to be able to monitor them. So normally, a matter of six to seven days, they will be out of the hospital. Already you have made almost about you know, six, seven days. So hopefully, by Monday, we expect most of them to, to, to of them to. A lot of Ghanaians have been traveling to India, to South Africa, to Europe to have transplants. Are we saying that going forward in the near future, we are able to do all of this in Ghana? Exactly. But it is the, the inconvenience of travel, the cost, you know, involved. And, 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 and sometimes when they go and they come back with complications, we have to deal with it here. So here you are, you are not part of the surgery. They have returned with one, one or two issues. And you have to deal with it without too much pity to what is happening. So even though it's like they've gone out to do it that we still bear the burden and the shock of trying to make sure that everything works fine. Sometimes calling to the doctors outside to, to understand what really happened. So for us, it's another way of consolidating our gains. That we do it here, we can keep an eye on you and make sure that everything is successful. So going forward, that is our mission, that is our aspiration, and we are pushing it. And I think it should be, it should be fine. Yes, so going forward, we expect to do almost every month to do transplants locally and, and, and shepherd our people to Are we hoping that in the next few years uh, we are going to be even treating patients from the sub region or maybe the African continent in Ghana? Yeah, because for, for, for us, our health system, so far as the West Africa is concerned, is well appreciated and, 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 and put on high pedestal. We have patients from Nigeria, from Sierra Leone, Liberia come in on a regular basis. You know, they always want to find out. When they come, okay, my brother, my sister has kidney. When he can you transplant it here? Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. So it's something that we want to offer. And we are training younger generation of doctors, of nephrologists, of nurses, of theatre people who, who will take up. You know? So that is what we want to make sure that it has come to stay. And so very soon it should be available. As you speak now, we, we, anybody who comes to us that want to win a transplant, we are willing to prepare them locally and offer it locally. That's recommending traveling outside. That is our aim. And this is what we want to pursue. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. McBerry Twist Cupcake. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Is it an expensive procedure? Can the ordinary Ghanaian afford it? On the face value, it is an expensive procedure. Expensive because they feel about the treatment that we need to do to make sure they are fit. Unfortunately for us, most of these reagents and things have to be imported from the country, outside the country. So it is, the lab workup is a bit expensive. Then, the surgery itself is also a bit expensive because there are a few things that we need that are, 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 are expensive. In other words, the type of sutures we use, the type of materials we use, are not reusable and they are disposable. In other words, you have to pay for them and use them. You're talking about $500 here, $1,500 here, $2,000 here, which you use on a patient and you just have to discard it. And they have to be, we don't have to be used that because as part of the procedure, we put them on what we call the immunosuppressants, which bring the immunity down from the beginning. And so we don't want any infection to come in and cause an issue. So everything that we use in this hospital, from theater gowns to gloves, is all disposable. So this is a bit uh, expensive. But as I've been said, you know, in our presentations, dialysis it's expensive in the long run. So even though this is expensive in the short run, yet you spend it and then you have the next 10, 15, 20 years without any need for any additional expenditures. You know, all the dialysis that, yes, is bit by bit, but it runs the whole year. When you put them together, by two years, you realize that the cost of dialysis is like a transplant and you have under eight or 10 more years of no, in quote, uh, massive cost. So it's cost effective. In the long run. So what's what's the range are we looking at? Twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. Sometimes you see 
people raising yeah, funds on social media for yeah. people to travel outside for, yeah. for some of these. So, so, so we are looking at something about twenty-one thousand to about thirty-five thousand, depending on what is done. US um, dollars, just US dollars. Okay. 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 But it must admit that yeah. as we go on, we realize that there are things that we can let go. There are things that we can bring on board. We think that as time goes on, it may be a little bit cheaper. But for now. Yes, uh, things are being done, things are being brought up in bits. Okay. You don't have scales of numbers, so everything is expensive. Once you pick one thing, five and five, maybe you've got a box of 12, and you end up being about $500. But here you have to pick you know, thousand five okay. for three, and that makes it more expensive. So this is how it is now, expensive because things cannot be reused. Okay. But then, I think going forward, it costs me to come back as we get the numbers, and then we try to, you know, Use local things. Okay. To, to things that we I've got a, one or two more questions. First, the donors, do they sign any legal document? Okay, good. So we have got a concern. Okay. We have got a concern that they sign. And then we meet an ethics committee, which is made up of eminent persons, including lawyers, that may approve it. So we have about uh, 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 two consent forms that they sign to be part of it, and also a clearance from the ethics committee who write what they have also found to support what we've done. So legally, we've got three documents on board. A normal consent form that everybody signs as in having a surgery in Kolebo, a special consent form for either receiving or donation, and then I uh, would call an ethical clearance for the committee that we have interviewed them and that we can go ahead and do it to that committee. Yesterday, uh, a few days ago, we spoke to the presidential advisor on health. He mentioned uh, having a comprehensive legislation on organ harvesting, organ donation. Is that mm. something that your, your outfit is also pushing for, for a very comprehensive legislation on how to harvest and how to transplant all that? Yeah, exactly. In fact, we, we, are, we are the originators of the document itself. In fact, the initial originators were Professor Yabua, Dr. Edu, I mean, I mean some of our senior colleagues. They originated it 2007, 2008. For they've been on the shelf for a while. 2006, 16, 2017, we revised it as a newer, younger generation. Right. So it's been revised and to bring in course newer technology, newer imaging technologies and that is available to us. So it has been done. Now the importance of this legislation is that first it gives the framework and the comfort for all those who are working. Yeah. For instance, we won't proceed until we have got this ethical clearance and letters right. because we, 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 there's no legal framework. Right. And even though we want to offer services, there must be safety right. or legal back, you know, cover for the doctors who are doing it as well as the patients who are making the donations right. and receiving. So it's important. Now, we are doing what we call, you know, donor or live donor. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. must give yeah. up something right. and hope he will survive without right. any complication. Right. And it's difficult to convince yes. people, even though we know it is, it is, it is the case. Yeah. But to lose a, a part and say that yeah. that will happen is yeah. difficult. But when we have the legal framework, it goes both to support this kind of donation, mm -hmm. but also what we call cadaveric. Right. Whereby somebody is dead in an accident, in an emergency, and they have given a prior consent which this legal will allow them to do that. Right. Then we can pick a kidney, we can pick a, you know, a skin, we can pick a heart, we can pick a lung, uh, we can pick things that are needed you know, to, to help other people who need it, whether liver or even sometimes even organs like yeah. testes and penis, and all yeah. these are being you know, transplanted. So a legal framework allows people to voluntarily say that when I'm there, like they donate to the anatomy yeah. department and things, yeah. to make it available. Mm -hmm. So the surgeons then can come in and harvest these materials, and then, and then, and then. And what then, stage are we yeah. at with, with this legislation? So the draft has been done okay. by the, you know, you know, the, the medical people. Those in the ministries have looked at it and, 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 and fine-tuned it. Uh, uh, the next stage, we are told from our discussion, is to get the legal, uh, get lawyers to look at it and put it in legal language. Okay. And then we are off to the parliamentary committees on health to see how best we can go, because the final act must pass through parliament. parliament. Okay. Yeah. But where we are now is what we call a legal drafting of the document to make sure that we have done it as clinicians and how best we think, but we are told it has to go into a legal language. And so that's the say that we are told. The document is being submitted for a legal language, but it's been revised uh, extensively. Exactly. For it, it the final question is, what, what do you say to your colleagues who are leaving the country in droves because there's better opportunities out there for them? Some of you have stayed back uh, and are contributing. What do you say to the colleagues who are moving out? No, no, you see, um, um, it's a joy to see the smile in the faces of, of your own people, your kids, men. It, it's a joy to see it. And it's rewarding, you know, here we are having the opportunity to interact with us. 
you may be out there and doing so many big things and you not even have any coverage at all to show what, what you are doing. Yeah. Unless you yourself post it on Facebook or so when nobody even comes looking for you. So there's a lot of satisfaction uh, in what we do. Some of us have been around, you know, past 20, 25 years practicing medicine and, 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 and it's been rewarding. So yes, the financial issues are there. We encourage you know, the government and other people to try and see how best we can meet each other halfway to improve the finances. But it's, 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 it's refreshing and rewarding to see your own kinsmen, your own uncles, your own brothers, your own, you know, clan people, your own countrymen, yeah. your own, you know, race, having access to what is best out there. Okay. I think it's something that we're grateful to stay behind and offer that. It is rewarding and, and it's a joy to see this. Happen. Prof, thank you very much for your time and congratulations once again for, for, for the procedure. We hope to see more and see Ghanaians living a better life. And we've been speaking to Professor Che, he's a urologist at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Ghana's premier teaching hospital. They performed a kidney transplant only in July. There's another one scheduled for August. And this is growing to, a, if you like, the mainstay uh, as part of the work that they do here. Many Ghanaians have been traveling to other parts of the world to seek medical uh, tourism and medical care in India and in South Africa especially. But the doctors in Kolebu believe that they have the expertise and the human resource to uh, make that procedure here. We're not talking about just kidney transplant, we're talking about a comprehensive legislation that allows uh, family people, those who are in accident, to donate their vital organs that are healthy to save others to have a better quality of life. This has been another edition of The Lowdown as we continue our comprehensive coverage on organ donation in Ghana. We'll come your way another time with another edition. Until then, it's bye for now. My name is Daniel Ojo.